Hi there everyone. The new HD Zero goggles are finally here and I cannot wait to take you through all of the features and specifications of this new product for a few different reasons. The first is that if you're currently flying HD Zero or you're thinking of getting into HD Zero, these new goggles offer a really significant performance uplift for the whole HD Zero system in terms of latency, image quality, refresh rate. We're going to talk all about that later. The second is that these are the first digital goggles that offer a no compromises analog video experience as well. And so they're excellent if you're someone who flies both systems or who likes to spectate on your friends who fly analog, that sort of thing. And finally, these are open source goggles, which means that the mechanical design and all of the software that's running on these goggles is freely available. And I'm really excited to see the open source ecosystem that is going to develop around this product going forward. Not only are we going to be looking at the goggles, but we're also going to be taking a look at the new HD Zero Nano 90 camera as well, which is HD Zero's first 90 frames per second camera. And it's specifically designed to work with the 90 hertz panels in the HD Zero goggles to give you the lowest possible latency for racing. It's a lot to cover in one video, and I'm really excited to hear your thoughts on the new goggles and camera down in the comments. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. OK, so let's take a look at these new HD Zero goggles on the bench. And we'll start at the top of the goggles with the menu buttons. Most digital goggles have a little joystick for the menu. HD Zero have gone in a different direction, and they have gone with this circular wheel that you can use to scroll through the menu and a central button to select the option. And in my opinion, this is a much more intuitive and easier control interface than a four direction joystick, because it's much easier to know which way you need to scroll the wheel um, and you never accidentally get the direction wrong. Over on this side is a multifunction button, a short press starts and stops the DVR recording on the goggles, and a long press turns on and off the defogging fan. And this works really well to keep the screens nice and clear even if you're flying uh, in cold weather. There's also two antenna connections at the top of the goggles, and these are SMA connectors. Other goggles like the Walk Snail and the DJI system use RPSMA antenna connectors. The HD Zero goggles use SMA antennas the same as other analog goggles. No antennas are supplied with the HD Zero goggle, so you're going to want to pick up appropriate patch and omni antennas. I would suggest maybe two patches for the front of the goggles and two omnis for the top. And HD Zero have put in these rail slots here. So I think we can expect to see patch antennas that will slide onto the front of the goggles using these rails. There's a set on the top and a set on the bottom as well. If we come around to the side here, we can see the power button on the goggles, and this is actually a two position sliding switch. So rather than having a latching button or a momentary button, they've got this sliding switch. And I think this is a great solution for people who just like the goggles to power up when they plug a battery in. You can just leave the position, the switch in the on position the whole time, or you can use a switch to turn the goggles on and off. We also have two fans, one on this side of the goggle, and another on this side of the goggle, and they blow air through the goggle to keep the HD Zero electronics board cool inside. And they're controlled separately from the defogging fan on the top of the goggle. Coming over to this side, there is a little plastic cover for the analog module bay. Now this is available separately, and HD Zero were kind enough to send this to me as well so I can show you how it works really simple. You have this module bay and it just plugs in on the side of the goggles. You have to be careful because these are quite narrow pitch pins, but if you get them nicely lined up it will just, just slide on like that. And then you'll fit your module in here and close it up with a standard module cover. So if you're using an analog module like for a fat shark goggle, that will fit on there, uh, closes up nicely and then looks really neat on the side. And of course, you'll have separate antennas for the module there. If we flip the goggle over and look at the bottom of the goggle now, you can see that there's a lot going on down here. So there is focus and IPD adjustment for both of the screens here. 
And it looks like you can go from, well, at least minus five to plus five, but probably even a little bit more, maybe minus six to plus six. And I think that's going to be quite similar to the other goggles with adjustable um, focus on them as well. If we look at the ports on the bottom of the goggles, you can see that there is a lot of functionality built into these goggles. There's an output for a head tracker module. So the HG Zero goggles have a head tracker built in. There's a port for updating the firmware on HD Zero VTXs. So a cable is provided and you plug one end into the goggles, the other end into a, an HD Zero VTX and you can update the firmware very easily. They have a headphone port here. So this is an earphone so that you can listen to audio and also it has a connection for an external microphone as well. So you can record onto the goggle DVR your audio of you speaking as you fly the drone, for example. HDMI out, and that will show exactly what you're seeing on the screen of the goggles. So for spectating or for capturing the, the footage using an HDMI capture card or something like that. An HDMI input port so that you can use the goggles as a screen for um, flying a simulator. An SD card slot, which is used for recording the DVR onto the SD card, and also for firmware updates for both the goggles and the VTXs using the firmware port. And an AV input plug as well, so that you can use AV in on the goggles and view whatever content you want transmitted over this AV input port here. The screens on the HD Zero goggles are 90 Hz, 1080p OLED panels. And OLED has become the standard for all top-end premium goggles because they offer great colors, really vivid colors, very good contrast, dark blacks and bright highlights, and very little motion blur because they have a really fast pixel response time. It's really good to see HD Zero using this technology in the screens for these goggles. Let's talk about the comfort and the fit of the goggles now, and that's really, really important. The strap that HD Zero provide with these goggles is really nice. It's very wide, very soft and stretchy, and feels really premium. The little pouch that they've sewn in here for holding the battery for your goggles is really nice. I think a lot of people are going to like to store the, the goggle battery in there if you use a sort of 2S LiPo for your goggles. The foam on the inside of the goggles is also really nice. It's incredibly soft, um, it's very high density, and it feels really nice on the, on the face. HD Zero provide two different face plates. They have a wider face plate and a narrower face plate. And I have a European shaped face. So I use the narrower face plate and I find that that's really comfortable. I don't get any light leakage at all. And these face plates just kind of snap in and out. They're a little bit stiff, but you're only going to change it once when you decide which face plate is right for you. When I put the goggles on, I mean, I think that personally for me, these are probably the most comfortable FPV goggles that I've ever worn. It's, it's really impressive to me how the weight from the goggle is transferred really nice and evenly to the top of my cheekbone here, rather than onto the bridge of my nose. So some of the goggles, all the weight ends up on the bridge of my nose and they feel quite uncomfortable after a little while. With these goggles, I get the weight on the top of my cheeks it's very, very comfortable and the strap is adjustable. I can get the fit just right so that there's just the equal amount of pressure on my forehead and on the tops of my cheekbones, but not on the bridge of my nose. And I haven't worn any other goggle that's managed to achieve that. So HD Zero have done a fantastic job with this. And these goggles are going to be very comfortable um, for me for wearing long periods. So that's certainly a, a fantastic feature. Another really important factor for comfort is weight. So I'm going to measure the HD Zero goggles without any antennas or cables. And you can see it comes in at 360 grams, almost 361 grams. Let's compare that to the DJI Goggles 2. 
which come in at 298 grams. The Skyzone Sky04X, which come in at 294 grams. The Walk Snail Avatar goggles, which come in at 309.5 grams. And the DJI goggles V2, they come in at 401.6 grams. Weight-wise, HD0 land in the middle of the road. And how you feel about the weight is going to depend on what you're used to. If you're used to flying the original DJI goggles and the DJI goggles V2, which is what I fly most, they are a little bit lighter, about 40 grams lighter than those. And so I notice that they're a little bit lighter. If you're someone who flies mainly analog goggles or the Walksnail Avatar goggles or the DJI goggles 2, then the HD0 system is going to be about 60 grams heavier on your face than those. And if you're sensitive to weight, you might notice. For me personally, I don't think the weight is a problem and the comfort of the fit more than makes up for a few extra grams on the goggles. One of the biggest upgrades that HD0 have brought to these goggles is in the in-goggle menu system. Let me take you through the menus now and show you all of the different options that are available. One of the coolest ways to show you all of the features of the HD0 goggle is to take you through the goggle menu. We'll start on the Scan Now page where you can scan through all of the channels that HD0 broadcasts on and then use the scroll wheel to select the channel that you want to tune into so that you can either watch someone else fly or you can tune into your drone when you're going to fly. The next page is the source page and this shows you all of the different sources that your HD0 goggle can display. So obviously we've got the HD0 VRX, HDMI input, AV input and your expansion module for an analog VRX. The image settings page allows you to change all of the settings for the OLED displays in the goggles. The OLED drive, brightness, saturation, contrast and the auto on and off timer as well. The power page shows you what type of battery you're using and allows you to select the low voltage warning so that you don't accidentally over discharge your battery while you're using the goggles. The fans page allows you to control the fan speed in the goggles. You can set it to auto or you can control the top fan which does the defogging and the side fans which cool the HD0 VRX. You can control those separately. In the recording options, you can choose whether to record automatically whenever the goggles are connected to a drone or start and stop recording manually with the button on the top of the goggles. There are two recording formats, MP4 and TS. MP4 is a more widely used format, but if the goggles lose power while recording DVR, you might corrupt the MP4 file and not be able to play it back. TS is a data stream type format, which means that even if you lose power, while you're recording, it will only affect the last few seconds of video and you'll still have most of the recording untouched. So if you're just using the DVR to find your drone uh, where it's crashed or anything like that, then I would select TS. If you're recording the DVR specifically to um, edit into a video or something like that, I would choose MP4. You can also select whether you want to record the OSD, whether you want to record audio for your DVR, and what source the audio is coming from. So it can come from the mic, which is built into the goggles, the line in to the goggles, so the headphone jack, or uh, the AV input as well. Here are the settings for the auto scan, which is on the first page. You can turn that auto scan on or off, and you can also select which input is going to be the default when the goggles power on. Inside connections, you can see that the HD0 goggles have support for Express LRS backpack and also a Wi-Fi access point, which is going to be available with the second generation expansion module. And that will allow you to transmit um, analog video to your phone, for example, over Wi-Fi. It's quite a cool feature. And you can also configure the Wi-Fi settings for connecting to the goggles for Wi-Fi video streaming as well. The HD0 goggles are the first goggles to come with Express LRS Backpack built into them. And what ELRS Backpack allows you to do is coordinate the video channel for your drone and your goggles separately. So ordinarily, you'd have to change the video channel on your drone first, and then separately, you'd have to change the video channel on your goggles. 
and get them both on the same channel so that you can see the video. With Express LRX Backpack, you do it slightly differently. You set your video channel on your transmitter, on your radio. And then the radio communicates to both the drone and the goggles what channel it should be on. The advantage of this approach is firstly that your drone and your goggles will always be on the same channel. And secondly, you can set your video channel while both the drone and the goggles are powered off. And then when you turn on the goggles, they will automatically move to the correct channel the moment they link up with your transmitter. And that can be really useful in situations where you don't want to power your video transmitter on on the wrong channel. With this functionality, you can select the channel you want, then power the drone and the goggles on and know that they'll be on the right channel. As I mentioned earlier in the review, the goggles have a built-in head tracker and here you can turn that head tracker on or off and calibrate it. The playback page allows you to playback any of the DVR footage that you've recorded. The final page is the firmware page and here you can see the current version of firmware that's on the goggles and you can also trigger a firmware update. So if you've put um, a firmware image file on the SD card and maybe you have a VTX connected to the goggle firmware port, you can trigger either to update the VTX firmware or update the goggle firmware as well. Okay, so now that we've looked at all of the features and specs of the HD0 goggle, we're going to put it through its paces with some performance testing. And to do that, we're going to be using this. This is the new HD0 Nano 90 camera. It's made by Runcam, and it's the first HD0 camera that offers 90 frames per second video. So it can do 720p at 60 frames per second, or 540p at 90 frames per second. And HD0 claim that at 90 frames per second, this camera is faster than analog video. And we're going to put it to the test. We're also going to be looking at the image quality comparison between 720p and 540p, so you can see what you might be giving up to get that even faster latency. As with all my image quality comparisons, I'm not going to tell you which is 720p60 and which is 540p90 right away. I'm going to let you have a look at both images and make your mind up which you think has the higher resolution and whether you think that difference is really significant for the type of flying that you like to do. To help for those of you who are watching on smaller screens, I'm going to zoom both of the images in to two times so you can really see the difference in the detail between the two images. Have a look which you think is which, make your mind up, and whether you think the trade-off for the lower latency and higher refresh rate is worth it in terms of image quality. And then I'm going to zoom both images back out to one times and show you which is which. And we have 720p60 on the left and 540p90 on the right. I think if we look at the two images side by side, it's pretty clear that the 540p image is slightly softer with slightly less detail than the 720p image. And that's to be expected because HD0 is fundamentally a fixed pixel rate system. It can push a certain number of pixels per second through the link. And you can choose to a certain extent whether you have more pixels per frame or more frames per second. And so with this 90 frames per second camera, HD0 is saying, well, we'll transmit less pixels per frame, but more frames per second to give a lower latency video link with slightly lower detail. I think racing pilots will really appreciate the opportunity to trade off some detail for lower latency and more temporal resolution in their video feed. One of the areas in which HD0 is significantly ahead of the competition is in low light performance. This footage was shot in the middle of the night, it's pitch black, and the HD0 camera is still able to capture a lot of detail. And this is going to be particularly useful if you're flying indoors and you're flying under or behind furniture, or you like flying LED type race courses in the dark. If you're particularly interested in how the fidelity and detail of these different video systems compare to one another, I'll put some links down in the video description to some of my previous image quality comparison testing. Not only that, make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm planning some really scientific testing of camera resolution in the near future using a TV test card and some image analysis software. It's going to be really, really interesting. You don't want to miss out on that. Now let's look at the latency of the HD0 goggles and Nano 90 camera. 
both at 90 frames per second and 60 frames per second and see how it stacks up against the competition. This latency test footage is recorded at 1000 frames per second or exactly one millisecond per frame with the LED turning on at time zero. So you can see exactly how the HD0 goggle screen reacts in 720p60 and 540p90 mode. To save you having to count frames, I've produced this chart to compare the HD0 goggles and Nano 90 camera against all the other video systems available in their fastest possible configurations. And HD0 is just faster now than anything else. And the differences are not small either. With the HD0 system set to 60 frames per second, you're looking at anywhere from a 30 to 50% reduction in latency compared to the old HD0 VRX or any of the other digital systems. And if we move up to 90 frames per second, we're now looking at a 25% latency reduction compared to the fastest possible analog system and half or less the latency of anything else. And if you're using the video system in competition, that is a really significant competitive advantage. That brings us to the end of the video. And now that you've seen all the data, I'd like to give you my thoughts and conclusions on these products. And we're gonna start with the HD Zero goggles. I can't find fault with them really. They are a very well thought through and exceptionally well-made product. The user interface is very simple and easy to use, much nicer in my opinion than the interface on a lot of other digital goggles. The comfort and fit of the goggles is really, really good for me. They are very comfortable on the face. There's no light leakage. Um, I could definitely wear these for a long period of time without getting any fatigue. The image quality from the OLED screens and the optics in the goggles is first rate, really top notch. And the feature set is, well, I think almost unparalleled in, in any other goggle. You've got the ELRS backpack integrated in so you can control your video channel from your radio for both the drone and the goggles. We have a head tracker, all the inputs you could want, HDMI, AV in, um, input for an analog module bay as well. But it's the performance of these goggles with this 90 frames per second camera that is quite simply race winning. The improvement in latency that you get with 90 frames per second HD0 is going to give competitive racing pilots everywhere a really significant edge on the competition. But it's not just racing pilots who are going to benefit. If you're a freestyle pilot who likes to fly aggressively, fast, close to objects, and likes to dive into spaces where you don't know what's going to be there, the reduction in latency between the drone and the goggles is going to make a difference. And you're going to be able to do things that you were not able to do before with these goggles as a result of the reduced latency. Carl is selling these goggles for 495 US dollars direct from HD0, and they are not going out to distributors or other retailers. So you're only gonna be able to buy them direct from HD0. And the pricing on these goggles for the features and the specification and the performance that they provide is really aggressive. $495 is basically the wholesale price, I think. If and when the goggles go out to distributors, the pricing will go up and I would expect it to go up to around the $600 mark based on, on my understanding. The Nano 90 camera is being offered for $65 direct from HD0 and that is going to be available through distribution as well. So you'll be able to get the camera from retailers but not the goggles. Carl is not going to be able to keep either the goggles or the Nano 90 camera in stock at that pricing because of the performance benefit that it offers racing pilots. So if you want the benefit that the HD0 goggles and Nano 90 camera provide, um, there are links down in the video description. You can follow those links, go to the HD0 website and place your order today. I think the pricing is as good as it's ever going to be. And the performance benefit is really significant. The links in the video description are affiliate links. So I would really appreciate it if you are planning to make a purchase, if you'd use those links because then I get a small commission. It's one way you can help support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. That's all I have for you for today. I'm really interested to hear what you think of the goggles and camera down in the comments. And until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.